So hello everyone, you're all very welcome to tonight's Grass 10 and Pasture-Based Ireland webinar titled Growing Grass Using Less Nitrogen Fertilizer. My name is Joseph Dunphy and I'm delighted to be joined once again by my Grass 10 colleague John Douglas and Michal O'Leary, the coordinator of Pasture-Based Ireland. We're also delighted to be joined tonight by 2020 Young Grassland Farmer of the Year, David O'Leary from County Kerry who will take us through how he gets the best response from the nutrients that he applies on his farm, both from, from in the past, from 2020, and how he aims to do it in 2021. So a small little bit of housekeeping as normal before we get going tonight. Um, there's a Q&A box um, in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. So if you have any questions for any of our panelists tonight, don't be afraid to, to, to throw a question in. And also, um, if you want to watch this webinar back in, in you know, over the coming weeks or months, if you Google Chagas Grass 10 down the left hand side of the page, you'll see the webinar subheading and all our webinars that started in um, uh, started over a year ago now um, will all be there to view, plus also the PDF of the slideshow from the night. So, as we said already, the purpose of this webinar is, you know, growing grass with less nitrogen and also improving the efficiency um, with the nitrogen and, you know, and, and, and slurry organic, organic fertilizer that we spread on the farm. OK, so I suppose the purpose of this webinar and web webinar, what we want you to get out of this webinar tonight is developing an effective fertilizer plan for both heavy soils and dry soils for the coming year. Uh, to encourage you to use pasture base to record all your fertilizer and slurry that's applied. Understand then how, how clover can help to reduce the fertilizer usage during the summer months. And then we just towards the end, we'll introduce nutrient use efficiency and how to calculate it when you have all your fertilizer and slurry recorded at the end of this year using, using pasture base Ireland. So our webinar structure for tonight, I'm just going to cover a little bit first on the response to spring nitrogen, a very topical question. Um, but we'll, 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 we'll start with that. We'll then have a quick look at a, a dry free drain and soil, um, a, a, spring, a spring nitrogen example for that soil. We're then going to move over to David and we'll have a quick look at David's farm performance for 2020. Um, we'll get a look, quick look at his, um, his spring nitrogen plan. And we'll also then move a little bit on to maybe thinking a little bit further down down the line in terms of his plan maybe for 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 clover and how he's going to reduce uh, spring nitrogen over over the summer months. Um, and then we might just have a quick look before we finish at um, how to record uh, slurry and fertilizer using the pasture base, the desktop and the app. As you said already, having a quick look at the nutrient use efficiency and a couple of and a couple of tips just to summarize at the very, very end um, how to reduce fertilizer in in 2022. OK, so we'll kick off there straight away, just get, get going on the spring nitrogen. And I suppose, like I said, it's very, very topical. You know, spring nitrogen or, or sorry, nitrogen has pretty much doubled in cost um, over the last over a lot over the last number of months. And, you know, it's it's hard, you know, it's hard sourced in, in uh, you know, in, in a couple of a couple of parts of the country, but I suppose, you know, and the, you, you, we're, we're hearing things in the media and reading things in the media about spring nitrogen, but I just, I suppose what I want to put across over the next, over the next number of slides is that even though it's expensive <clears throat> for the commercial, for the commercial farmer, it's still very, very important to, to the grass, to, 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 uh, to our grassland plan over the next, over the next couple of months. Okay. So, from, from the Chagas work that's been done, we normally value spring grass in a typical year. It's about 17 cents a kilo. OK, so it's, you know, it's, it's highly valuable. OK, so it's important to get, you know, to, to drive grass growth on early in spring. But in fact, some work that was done in Moor Park early or towards the end of last year, that due to the high concentrate costs, <clears throat> excuse me, the high concentrate cost that it could be it could be up as far as 22 cents per kilo of dry matter of value. OK. So if we look at just a, I've just took, took two, two prices there of urea at 950 or protected urea, about 50 euro a ton deer um, at a thousand euro a ton. We're probably looking at somewhere about two over two euro uh, cent, or two euro per, per kilo of nitrogen that, um, that, that, that is. So pretty much last year, you're probably looking at somewhere around a euro or a little along with a euro, I think it was half the price. Like So again, it, there is a huge, a huge increase in, in price. 
And that then, I suppose, works its way back into the, the response we need to get to, to break even on nitrogen. So if we divide down the bottom there, you can see, if we were to divide that two euro and six cent, if we were to take the urea example there, um, to divide that by the 22 cent per kilo for the, the value of spring grass, we need nine to 10 kilos of a response to break even. Okay. So, <clears throat> We're going to look at two two scenarios here based on based on applying applying a spring nitrogen, okay? And this has been some work that has been done uh, by by Michael O'Donovan down through the years in in Moorpark. So this first scenario is we're going to apply sixty kilos of N, okay, or you know, for so just a little over a bag of urea, or protected urea, in one application on the sixteenth of March. Okay, and in the second the second scenario, what we're going to do is we're going to apply twenty kilos of that 20 kilos of fertilizer in early February. And we're going to apply 40 kilos on the 16th of March. So the 60, the 60 kilos of fertilizer going out, you know, which one was going to grow more grass for us, okay? So <clears throat> the 60 kilos, um, based off the research, the 60 kilos that we apply on the 16th of March, for each kilo um, that was applied to give a response of about 14 kilos of dry matter. OK, so it's in the green box at the top here. So that's 60 kilos, that bag of urea, if we want, or bag of protected urea that was applied on the, was applied on in around Pat St. Patrick's Day. And maybe some farmers, you know, maybe we're thinking, oh, I'm not going to apply anything earlier this year due to the, due to, due to the, due to the, the price. That, that bag on, on St. Patrick's Day is growing about 840 kilos of grass. OK, so a little bit shy, about three quarters of a ton, a little bit over three quarters of a ton of grass for us. If we split that application, and the research has shown that that at 20 kilos of N that's applied in early February, okay, this is this is in Moorpark, 20 kilos of N in early February gave us the response of about 11 kilos of of uh, of grass per kilo. So the 20 by 11 is giving us 220 kilos of grass in response, and then. The, the 40 kilos that are applied on the 16th of March give us a, a much bigger response of 22 kilos of dry matter, okay? So that 40 kilos multiplied by, 20, 20, by 22, and sorry, this is over, I forgot to say, this is over 2020 and 2021, okay? This is over two years of a trial. The response was about 880 kilos. So the 220 plus the 880 is giving us about 1,100 kilos of, of grass. So we have eight, 40 kilos of grass grown with a singular application, or we have 1,100 kilos of grass grown with the split application, okay? So as you can see, there's, you know, there's 260 kilos of grass in the difference between a, Mar a March, a mid-March application of a, you know, a full bag, we'll call it a full bag of protected urea, or splitting that up over a smaller amount in early February, and then uh, you know a, 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 you know an, a, an, ap an application of a forty then in um, in in mid March. Okay, so what does that mean? What does that mean for 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 the average farmer? What does that two hundred and sixty kilos mean to me when I'm coming towards when I'm coming towards the end of my first rotation this spring? So if we take a farmer who stocked at three cows per hectare, <clears throat> in dairy scenario here. If I was to divide that 260 kilos of grass dry matter by three cows per hectare, that's given me about 86 kilos of grass per cow. And if I then was to divide down here at the bottom of the, of the page, if I was to divide that 86 kilos per cow, by this, divide that by seven kilos on a typical, a typical, you know, um, you know, we'll call it a night grazing or a, or a night grazing during the latter part of, during the latter part of March. Um, that's going to give me about six days grass on the farm, or we we'll call it 12 grazings. That could be 12 night grazings, or you call it you know, the guts are nearly a week's, a, a week's grass. Okay. So as you know, as I discussed with some of the lads here, like that could be the difference by about, you know, keeping your farm cover on, on target towards the end of, towards the end of, um, on March into early April, when you're looking to start the second rotation. Okay. So, um, getting out a little bit earlier even though the the, the night you know the nitrogen is a little bit more expensive in in, in early 2022 is is 
is hugely worthwhile. So the split application of fertilizer, even at high prices, has a positive effect. Okay. What 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 my, Michael O'Donovan's work would always say is that the carryover effect of of early nitrogen applied is substantial. So that that early nitrogen applied is grown grass early on, plus it's also having an effect in in early in early March. Okay. Now, you know, we 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 also have to look at a, a couple of different bits. Like, can we be a little bit cuter with the nitrogen that we apply? this spring definitely okay you know where it's not about say we need to go with the 20 the 20 kilos everywhere straight away it's maybe 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 for the, that first first rotation or the, sorry that first application in february of 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 nitrogen that maybe this year we'll target our highest returning paddocks okay so you know if you've a, a suite of um you know soil soil samples completed in the last in the last uh, you know getting getting them back now in the, these couple of weeks let's target our paddocks with optimum soil fertility let's target our receded paddocks let's target our our drier covers our drier drier paddocks and then covers definitely over four to five hundred okay if we can as you know as you know, it's harder, harder to, to, to start grass growth on covers, very, very low, um, you know, like for, you know, bare, bare, bared covers, they'd be better if they received uh, a light going, maybe 2000 gallons of LESS slurry. Um, and just, I suppose the last point is, you know, from a, from an environmental point of view as well, is to keep an eye, you know, keep an eye on the weather forecasts, okay. And, um, you know, both rainfall and soil temperatures to get the best decision on applying chemical nitrogen okay and i suppose just just to just to i suppose uh, mention the grass 10 news that are here in terms of the predicted grass growth for the coming week predicted soil temperatures you know um we'll have some rainfall information on it throughout the next month to try and to try and give farmers the best uh, you know i suppose the best advice we can on applying in and uh, in the in the correct conditions to get the best response when it is when it is up over two euro uh, per kilo of it if you go to the, the, the Grass 10 page on the Chagas Public website, you can subscribe to our new AM, new uh, e-newsletter. Um, just need to put your email address in there to receive it. Okay, so just to, I suppose you have to summarize on that again, you know, early in, spread on the right paddocks, you know, delivers, delivers for, for, for commercial farmers. Okay, so quickly we'll keep moving. And we're going to move to um, before we come to David. We're going to just just quickly pull up here a, a dry soil um, a spring nitrogen plan. Okay. So again, this is very much weather dependent, um, <clears throat> and again, very very individual to, to farmers. And just I suppose just to mention back on mention back on the the previous piece of that I I just covered there a minute ago. I know that that work was done in Moore Park on the and and the, the the nitrogen was applied in early February, um and I know that some people on the call on, on the webinar tonight will say well my my ground isn't my ground is in Moore Park, um but that there's nothing stopping us from okay maybe it mightn't be the first week of February but there's no reason why if we have the right conditions maybe 15 20th if we're a little bit further up north of the country that we we can't we can't be looking at the the right paddock on the right day with the right uh, the right conditions to go to that paddock okay so if we look at um a, the spring a spring guide so this take for instance this is an opening farm cover for uh for for a given farm we're looking at covers of probably 2000 down to down to you know low low enough covers um if we look at the 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 the, the covers the cover the highest covers on the farm would probably be grazed you know, we'll probably be grazed second. Probably, you know, when we get when we get a good a good um, good demand, be it be it be it cows or or or, or dry stock or whatever it may be. Um, this, the next the next the next the next batch of paddocks from kind of six seven hundred up to maybe twelve thirteen fourteen hundred. They're probably going to be the worth the first ones that we're kind of going into during 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 February, and then the last third then. Um, are going to be great. They're on a low cover at the minute. They're going to be grazed a little bit later. So, on the for the fertilizer plant for them, the first two paddocks in late January or the first few days of February, um, we aim to go for some of the light the lighter covers there. So probably under under maybe seven or eight hundred. 
um, with a max of 2,000 gallons to the acre with LESS technology, so low emission slurry spread, okay? And, you know, why we say 2,000 gallons max is, you know, the research with the, with the, with the, with the, with the, either the trail and shoe or the, the dribble bar is, is shown that we're getting up over, you know, with the 2,000 gallons that we're probably getting nine, nine, nine units, eight, nine units comfortably of, of, of nitrogen in that, with that, with that slurry. Okay. So to apply 2000 gallons as a, as a maximum. Okay. And I suppose just to, you know, to, to remind your contractors of that, that, you know, the figure is, you know, is 2000 gallons on these fields. Then on the next, on the next, um, the next set of paddocks, or sorry, the, the next, the next application during February, the two, the two highest, uh, I suppose the, the, the paddocks that were, that um, the paddocks that were the higher the, from the, the middle of our wedge up, both receive a half a bag of, of, of urea, protected urea, or protected urea, okay, 23 units of N per acre. The paddocks that have got slurry uh, receive nothing. And the, the paddock, the first few paddocks say that were, were, were grazed during that early part of February, they get about, they get roughly about two and a half thousand gallons per acre of less, a uh, less slurry after grazing. Okay. I suppose the, yeah, the, 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 the best, the, the most important thing with these is to keep an eye out on the forecast soil, te soil, soil temperatures and, and trafficability um, in, you know, within these paddocks. Okay. Then I suppose during March, during March for these fields, the paddocks and the heavier paddocks that have already received 23, 23 units of nitrogen, apply 40 units of N to them in protected urea after grazing. The next batch of paddocks apply 40 units of N, um, of, yeah, of N or protected urea or urea. Um, and if there is a few paddocks in here that are maybe say slightly slower, slower growing, um, you know, don't be afraid to dip off a little bit on the nitrogen in these paddocks. Okay, then this next bunch of paddocks that maybe were grazed in the, you know, the latter, in the middle part of February that received a bit of, received some slurry, apply 40 units of N per acre to them. And then um, these paddocks here that were, that were the green paddocks that had received some fertilizer uh, early on, there's two and a half thousand gallons of less slurry in early in early March applied to them after grazing, and then late March or in around the first of April they get another top up of twenty three units. Okay, so on 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 dry soils, the target will be to have somewhere between 50, 56 to sixty six units of N. You can see up here in the top right hand corner uh, by early April applied. Okay, so a lot of that, that that's coming in the in the form of urea, protected urea, and and low emissions slurry spreading. So then that depending on the paddock, that'll be somewhere between seventy and eighty three kilos of nitrogen per hectare. And as we said already, look at the key things are, you know, keep an eye on your forecast, avoid yellow and red warnings um, completely in terms of keep an eye, you know, over the next four or five days after um, after after you're applying any nutrients on your farm. Okay, so that's pretty much everything on the first two pieces I want to cover to cover off there on on the response to the response to you know to early spring nitrogen and looking at a, a, a dry farm and look at we might turn it over to you there John and we'll we'll uh, introduce David and get going on on some of his information. Yeah, thanks Joe. Um, thanks very much. And just before we come to David, we've, there's a couple of questions came in there. Uh, so if you do have any questions, just write them in the Q and A, and I, that we're covering, and we'll try and answer them. Michal, you wanted to, were you looking at answering a question there from from Park Lynch on the how much uh, a bale of silage is worth? I suppose at a kilo of dry matter basis there. Yeah. So look, typically, um, I suppose we'd be working off um, about fifteen kilo or fifteen cent per kilo of dry matter. Um, and I suppose that would have been using standard uh, fertilizer prices, but obviously they have gone up a little. So look, you're you're probably putting on two or three cents onto that. So you're up around 17 or 18 cents uh, per kilogram of dry matter when we talk about silage. Um, yeah. 
I suppose not to get confused there, probably maybe because that question came in around the time that Joe had up the the value of spring grass. So the value of spring grass is about twenty two cent a kilo, and the cost of that silage is fifteen cent a kilo of dry matter. But we usually compare the grass with the, with the meal because that's going to give a similar response in terms of whether it's live weight gain or milk production. That's going to give a similar response a lot closer to silage. So you have to sort of account that silage might seem cheaper or something like that, but it's not giving the same performance. And that's the actual cost of it. And that, that cost has been occurred already where I suppose the grass that's there now, um, you know, is... You you could call it that you know not that it's free but you know it hasn't really cost you anything as of yet so um so where fodder supplies or sort of grass supplies are high on farms great opportunity to utilize more grass this spring. Mm -hmm. And okay. there, there's another question there as well maybe for Joseph I suppose um why are we spreading protected urea so early um would ordinary urea do in the springtime? Yeah, and I suppose look at um, <clears throat> we would we would be trying to encourage farmers to to move over to protected urea. You know, I suppose to hit our to hit our targets. You know, down the line in terms of emissions. However, I do want to to, to mention that you know we're it's not available. It's may, maybe not be available in every location. And and I know and I know and I know well some you know with the way things are going in fertilizer at the minute it might be quite a question of what can i get in the yard and maybe urea is is available but i would be definitely thinking of you know if you can if you can get protected urea for definitely from from march on to to, to use it you know when it become more of a i suppose a, ri a risk of losing ammonia to the to, to the atmosphere uh, however you could probably get away with urea a little bit earlier all right Um, there's one question there in I suppose it's it's basically asking can you spread can in, in March to to uh, I suppose replace urea. Um, I suppose there's probably there's probably it's probably a very simple question for maybe if you look at it on a broader scale that fertilizer that that is in there that that's already on the farm it can still be used later on. You're going to have to probably buy more fertilizer and at the moment urea or um, protected urea is better value than can so. Spreading can is you know, in March. You are at higher risk of it leaching out of the ground uh, during the wetter periods, where where you're not with with urea because it's ammonia based. Um, um, so I would be looking at probably buying in some urea uh, to spread in in March and saving that can eighteen six twelve for for April time. Uh, you're going to have to buy probably buy more fertilizer anyway. Urea is better value. Protected urea is better value, so I'd use it, and I'm, it's going to be less less risk of running running off you don't want to put out some can that's already i suppose maybe it didn't cost you as, as much as it would if you were buying it now but then wasting it and some of it not being um, not being used so that's going to make it even more expensive okay okay so we'll keep going there okay so david uh thanks very much for joining us for us for you you can hear us all right yeah uh, it's great to have you on board. Look, so in preparation for this, we, we were in contact with David and, you know, he really has his head screwed on when it comes to, you know, looking at efficiency on farm in terms of growing grass and what he's putting in and what he's getting off. So um, I'm hoping that the, the next sort of 15, 20 minutes, you'll be able to share all your your knowledge and experience with us, David. So just if you want to, the, the figures are up there. Maybe we'll look at a couple of them in a minute, but just bring us back to, I suppose, how you got into farming. You were the young grass and farmer of the year. Uh, in 2020, I suppose, what got you to that to that stage? Yeah, I suppose. Look, when I uh, when I left college, when I finished college in 2017, I went to New Zealand farming for about six months. Um, when I came back, I leased a dairy farm just outside Castle Island um, in 2018. So I started out with 40, 48 cows the first year, um, and bringing it right up to now, we're going calving 80 cows this year um, so yeah look I suppose I would have been involved in, in farming um, since I was a young age but um, I kind of took the leave when I came back from New Zealand to go leasing a farm um, so it's, I'm lucky look it's, it's two miles away from, from my home place so it's, it's in a nice location. Very good and um, what's, the, what's the soil type like in your farm? Yeah, so I suppose the farm is split with um, a busy main road, so two thirds of the farm is, is dry. Um, there's a third that's across the main road. Um, it's it's heavy, but during the summer then it, it's nearly outperforming the, um, 
the drier side of the farm. So once it heats up, it uh, nearly matches the farm side. So look, it's, it has its advantages as well, but I suppose it's not, most of the time it's not available for horse rotation and grazing. So normally we'd be, I'd be grazing and say, across the road on the main, on the heavy side of it, um, probably from Patrick's Day onwards, but it's, it, there's nine times out of 10, it's not going to be available in February. But like I said, it has its advantages come, come May, it's, it really grows tonnage. Very good, very good. So you're making the most of it that way. So there is obviously challenges in, in the farm. It's not like it's not a dry land in one square block. So you've got like the, the, the farm is taken on. There is challenges within that. And I suppose there's probably been a, like you, you grew 14 and a half ton this year. I suppose it probably, you know, that's been building year on year, I, suppose, I presume up until last year. Was that like? Yeah, I suppose like the stocking rate, I suppose in 2018 was low. Like I said, we started out with 48 cows. Um, we were taking a lot of surplus off the milking platform. I suppose to give background on the whole farm, um, say the, the out block is 36 acres, so that supplies the silage and it's used for heifer rearing as well. So the demand for silage off the milking platform is very little. Um, so at the time, I suppose look, we were taking a lot of surplus off, off the milking platform in 18 and 19. I suppose we, we've been gradually building cow numbers up, um, up to now. So look, I suppose the good thing with last year and this year is that the the cow numbers are, are maxed out, so we're not taking as much surplus, but I suppose we're not pushing the farm massively either in terms of fertilizer. I suppose look, the main thing for me with the farm is that it's grown, grown the amount of grass that I need. Um, I don't, the annual tonnage, look, it's, it's, it's a nice figure to look at, but I suppose my attitude towards it always was that look, once I'm growing enough grass for the cows that are on the farm and there's enough silage coming in, anything else is, isn't really necessary. I just look at it, I suppose, at surplus as an expense if if it's not necessarily needed on the farm so that's that's the way i look at it you know yeah so okay yeah so you're getting i suppose a, a mar marginal return for anything extra over that like really so yeah you're, you're trying to focus on the efficiencies more that 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 are there at the moment and trying to improve them yeah I suppose, and exactly. that's where the fer fertilizer is coming into that yeah so um so yeah, so just running down through the figures there, the grazing per paddock is seven point three, and again, like you have to remember, some of these, you know, this, this is including paddocks that are really only maybe grazed from from April till September slash early October. Like you're, you don't have a long grazing season on, on you know a third of your platform, so that's obviously going to pull down the figures a little bit. Uh, pre grazing yield is that that's something I presume you you focus on a lot during the summertime. How how often are you walking? I suppose during the summer to to, to keep that right grass into the cows and. Yeah, I suppose look during the summer we're walking um at least every five days. It's probably shorter from growth is very high. Um but yeah, like look, the pre-grazing yield is something that I focused on a lot because I suppose when I first started out, I really struggled to get a handle on the covers. Um a lot of paddocks would, would have gotten away um and been cut for surplus. So where I look at it is I'm targeting fourteen hundred all the time. And if I think it's at fifteen or just above it, it's taken out for surplus if possible. So um yeah look that's that's the way i, I look at it anyway very good and i suppose that about a walk and um during the summertime maybe twice a week at times you have 37 farm walks done in the year um and i suppose you, you had something similar done the last couple of years as well so obviously putting putting the hours in is is paying off is it yeah it is like i said look you notice a big difference in milk production from uh from 2018 even to now i suppose the protein figure is kind of lifted us is it about point three five? I think the protein figure has lifted since since I started grass measuring. So I suppose look when I first started, I was new to the whole thing and new to farming. So yeah, um, it took a while to bed down. But look, it's I couldn't recommend it enough in terms of the grass measuring. It's it really changed the way I'm farming. And I, to be honest, great to hear. And just to give a comment maybe on cow or cow type and what they how they performed last year, how much meal it's fed. Um, so yeah, so look, last year I think we fed up in around about 850 kilos a meal, um, and cow type is mostly, there's a bit of jersey in the herd, but it's mostly black and white herd, um, and solids, it's, I think we'll do, we finished up in around 455 kilos last year, we're back a bit from the, the year before, um, but I suppose look at it is a young herd, the average lactation is about three, so there's another bit of improvement there like if, if we can reduce the culling rate um so yeah look i suppose the other thing to point out as well with the surplus that was coming off the milking platform 
it dropped um it dropped soil fertility a lot in 2019 so we were testing every year so when we tested before i started farming um in 2017 we tested the farm and it was good uh 2018 it remained the same and then after the fall of 2018 the soil indexes had dropped fairly dramatically because of the surplus that was coming off so it's yeah, just something yeah. to note with the excess surplus coming off it's and the fertilizer was going back on to a degree but not i suppose not as much as it should have been but the amount of surface that was coming off you couldn't maintain it so it's just something to highlight as well yeah we often underestimate what's coming off in these cuts so yeah that's an important point so just to look at uh, i suppose like the title of the of the webinar is, is growing grass using less chemical nitrogen so just to highlight there the total nitrogen uh, kilos per hectare used on your milking platform uh, this year was 200 or sorry last year was 215 kilos of nitrogen per hectare um which is made up of about 200 kilos of nitrogen of chemical nitrogen and about 15 kilos of nitrogen coming from organic so so from slurry basically across and that's on average across the platform and that was growing the 14 and a half tons basically okay uh, along with along with p and k i suppose but we're just focusing i suppose on nitrogen more so tonight so uh, and just to highlight there's a there's a figure there it's called nitrogen use efficiency and basically all the nitrogen that's brought onto the farm so that's it's usually through through feed and fertilizer are the main ones and maybe some stock bought in um or Im imported nutrients we'll say they're they're brought onto the farm and then what comes off um is basically put over the, the total brought in and they get a percentage so obviously it comes off on in a dairy farm mainly in milk it's some some in some in meat or livestock sales and then on a on a sheep or beef farm then it's it's mainly on the um just on, on animal sold so that's going off it and uh, david your farm there the NUE for your farm is 28 percent and from the Chagas National Farm Survey, the average dairy farmers were twenty four percent. So, uh, and I suppose there's targets there for the future to try, you know, an industry target there to try and hit thirty five percent. So, uh, and I suppose tonight's focus, while we're trying to grow grass using less nitrogen fertilizer, it really is coming back to I suppose how do we sort of we're sort of increasing this figure. And you know, the the, the good thing about a lot of this, while while we have to do it, um, you know, maybe from from uh, legal requirements and all is um that it's actually making more money so like for you david like reducing that fertilizer and not having to grow that extra silage and, and put on more fertilizer that's an efficiency there and it's it's paying you because it, you know as you say it can become a cost to the system at a certain point but we're going to go through some of these things of how we're going to increase that figure for for your farm tonight then david so me hollers so we i think you're taking over there you know with the pasture base stop sharing there now me go for it <clears throat> Um, open up PBI there, and we can go into um, we can go into David's profile. Um, so hopefully you can see uh, David's dashboard there. Yeah. Um, and look, I suppose we just might move to the mapping section. So the you'll find the farm mapping section down on the left hand menu here. Um, I suppose that that tool has been there for the last uh, six months or so. And we might just take a look at um, at David's farm here, and he might just describe maybe um, some of the paddocks, maybe, and, and what what kind of maybe soil type, or which ones are challenging, or, or which ones are the, the go to paddocks we'd say for spring grazing. Yeah, so look, um, paddock one to twenty one is on the farm side, obviously enough there. Um, as you go back towards the back end of the farm, uh, paddocks eight, nine, and ten. 11 and 12 and 13 would be uh, heavy enough, heavy type soil. Um, and from there down is relatively dry. Across the road, there is about 15 acres of the milking platform. Um, that's good. So 24 to 27. And the ones that aren't highlighted in are, I suppose, summer grazing as such. They're, uh, they get very little fertilizer during, during the year. They're just too wet to, to travel. So, um, so, yeah, so look on the farm side. The ones to twenty one are, I suppose, are, are the better paddocks, and across the road then um, kick on from kind of the first of April onwards. Okay, so that might bring us in as well. You described what's there. Just bring us into, I suppose, the your your spring nitrogen plan. So I suppose Joseph went through one there for a dry farm. I suppose your your farm, I suppose, is, is well. A certain area is definitely classed as heavy, and I suppose um, you're in a high rainfall area as well. So. 
you know, you, you mightn't get out as early as the 1st of February every year. I suppose you've you've even tailored, I suppose, your calving date around that, David, haven't you? Yeah, so we're not calving this year. It's on papers and around the 7th of February. I started breeding on the, the 6th of May. Um, so look, it's it's something that you kind of have to change, I suppose, kind of around here. It's, it's my attitude is that it, the aim is to try to get them to calve literally to grass, I suppose. So you have to tailor that to suit the ground plus the, the area for, with the rainfall that's down here as well. So um usually we're not out you won't be out grazing probably till the third week of february um even at that at times it doesn't happen so yeah. i suppose calving the of february suits suits me perfect here um because again i suppose 20 paddocks 24 and 20 to 27 across the road aren't in the first rotation so we'd be heavily enough stocked on the farm side so it's um it suits the calve that bit later um to know so look it's Again, I suppose it's relative. Like, I mean, yeah. we're not. We, we try ten, We try and have a third graze in February, but it doesn't always happen that way. So we tend to make up for it in March anyway. So. Yeah. So if we were to tie tie that into what I suppose is going on in terms of slurry and fertilizer going out, then um, David, you're 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 getting some. I suppose fertilizer out uh, in February, aren't you? Toward, yeah. So long around, around that time you start grazing, basically, is it? Yeah, so before we would have been, I suppose in 2018, I would have been applying nitrogen early enough um, soon after the opening date. So I kind of tailored that now to suit calving plus the response of it. So look, we're not going with any nitrogen this year again until probably the middle of February. Um, yeah. Once we start grazing, the farm cover itself, look, is it just, it'll end up being in around 1100 opening cover. I did a cover last week and it was a thousand, in and around 1030. So a lot of grass on the farm at the minute then. Yeah. Yeah, so look, the farm cover is too high to travel with slurry at the moment anyway, so which is a good complaint. Um, so what we'll do is, once we start grazing, we'll follow cows with slurry, if it's possible, if, if ground is travelable. So um, other ground in, we'll get about 23 units of urea. So, but look, we have a big demand to fill people in. We have a big demand outside the milking platform for slurry because the, the out block that I described earlier is... Uh, it's index one and two for P and K. So only about a third of the slurry will actually go on the milking platform. The remainder will go on the silage ground. So yeah, and some of that, some of that might is, is even gone out this week. I think is it that what you said? Yeah, yeah, it's going out early next week. Yeah. Early next week, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Um, very good. So basically, um, it'll either get uh about half a bag of of urea, urea protected urea. Uh, around that 20th of February time on anything that I suppose that you're going to graze is going to instead of instead of instead of getting that is going to get um it's going to get followed with slurry that's the plan yeah. anyway so yeah. on about third of the area then we'll probably get slurry ish and then the rest gets it's uh, fertilizer so that's the first application so bring us through then so that's we we'll say that's totally taken care of the end of February and, and early March time so when you're getting into, I suppose around Patrick's Day onwards, what is it, is there more fertilizer being applied then at that stage? Yeah, it is. I suppose the way I did it last year um, was a kind of a reduced amount of fertilizer. So anything that got anything that was receded since I started had got um, got about thirty units, 30, 30, 30 units of nitrogen again in March. But anything that had a lower amount of ryegrass, we cut back the fertilizer because the response just wasn't there. So what we did was. Um, like I said, anything that was receded, we gave the 23 units roughly either in slurry or urea in February. And then in March, we gave us what we tar tried to do was target, say, for the 1st of April to have about 60 units out. So we cut back from the 70 units to the 60. Um, and like I said, some paddocks might have only got about 55, between 50 and 55 units of in, depending on the soil type if they're wet, plus if the ryegrass content is low, the response just wouldn't be there. Yeah. And I suppose what we're talking about is the is the milk and platform there that Michal has on on the on the farm side of the road as you call it, the stuff across the road actually doesn't mightn't even get anything up until sort of the end of March early April is that correct or? Yeah, that won't get anything up normally until probably Paddy's day onwards. You get it'll get half a bag and then again say middle of April it'll be followed on similar to the farm side. So that'll only end up getting probably about forty units by mid April. So yeah. it's, it's kind of a different spreading pattern as opposed to the farm side because of the ryegrass contents again plus the soil type so. 
And then coming into April time, then I suppose you're moving out of spring. Probably you're you're shortening up your rotation. Then you're probably getting into your second rotation. You're going yeah. with around bag and a half of eighteen six twelve. Then is it in, in April? Yeah. So originally before we would have been doing two bags of eighteen six twelve. So we cut it back to about twenty seven units of eighteen six twelve in April. Um, and from then on, so bring you into May. Then it's we just follow the rule literally. It's a unit a day. So yeah, in the round between eighteen and twenty units. Um. It's what we follow the cows with them. So. And obviously, then there's within a bag and a half. There's probably not enough for main, maintain maintenance on paddock. So you topping mm-hmm. up with eighteen six twelve again later in the summer. Yeah, well, look, we what we did last year. We did the April run was eighteen six twelve, and what we actually spread um for majority of the summer to bring up the K index was nineteen zero fifteen. Um, it was an easy way of because of nineteen units, you were just spreading a bag, bag an acre every round. So it was yeah. an easy way of applying. Nitrogen plus the K, so mm. I'm waiting on soil results, but it should have brought it up fairly, fairly dramatically. So. Yeah, so I suppose look while um, while we're after spending a bit of time on that, like the, the key things there is David has a plan of what paddock is nearly getting what at this stage. So like everyone I suppose listening in tonight should really know what paddocks on their farm is getting what fertilizer. So a lot of this comes back if you want to reduce your amount of chemical fertilizer. There's no there's no magic key. There's a lot of just planning. A bit of focus on some planning, and that's you'll see this is throughout whether it's on the soil fertility, on the clover, on the on the on the fertilizer plan. It's all about focusing and having a having a plan on the paddocks, and that's that's the key, I suppose. So if we move on, then uh, I suppose just maybe bring it into the the soil fertility side of things. Um, Michal, are you able to suppose to do you want to show show up at that? I suppose what you've obviously been working hard on that as you said you, you gave a bit of a, a an intro on that um david in terms of the farm has had to i suppose improve indexes to grow the grass so um that's obviously helping you with with the with your your response that you're getting from the fertilizer applied to yeah look it is i suppose um like i said we're soil we're soil testing nearly we are soil testing every year since i started um very good so look, what I do is we'll say even in terms of receding to fit to put an idea on it. So I try and target the paddock the year before. So we'll say last year I decided which paddocks I was going to do this year, get the pH right. So we, when we were doing the line last year, we spread about a hundred ton uh, across the whole farm, including the out block. So the paddocks that we were receding this year got lined last year to bring up the pH to the correct index, like so. Yeah, so you're, you're doing it right. You're getting the soil fertility right, and then reseeding rather than yeah. reseeding and realizing why why isn't the perennial rye grass lasting in the sward? So you're... yeah, so like for example, paddock fourteen there was receded last year, um, the end of April. So the year before, what we did was that got lined, and it got slurry twice I think throughout the year. So like we tend to target. That's the way I work it. I tend to target to get the K up. Uh, P is slow enough to rise, um, but I should try and get the pH right straight away if I can year before and then it should hit the ground running after that then. yeah and you know, I suppose just to, you know, something you told us earlier was there was a hundred ton of lime went, went out on the farm last year yeah across the whole farm yeah 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 so there's um yeah so that's that's a nice bit of I presume there's probably more a bit more planned for this year coming as well is there yeah I think about 60 ton roughly will be going out again um depending I suppose look we're doing, there'll be a lot of receding going on this year so it'll probably be probably closer to 80 ton that'll end up going out more than likely Okay, very good. Um, so that's all right. So look again. Look, the soil fertility is 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 nearly the number one sort of port of call when you come to getting a response to fertilizer. So if we want to get a better response, it might be going from getting a response of maybe twenty kilos of grass for every kilo we put on to maybe up to twenty five kilos, and you know soil fertility will will help that. So, um, okay. So if we move Sorry, on, maybe. John, Oh, There's yeah. just a question there, maybe Dan, that you might just verify um verify how much fertilizer was applied and what what was the total in, and uh, just the fourteen tons of grass. Is that just the uh, the milking platform here, or is it including the paddocks across the road as well? It just might just just a couple of questions there just to verify that, please. Yeah, so well, but David probably answered them, but I think it's 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 the fourteen and a half ton is basically an icon on on the map there, and it basically anything on that map there got. On average, two hundred and fifteen kilos of nitrogen per hectare in total, and that was broken down with two hundred kilos of chemical nitrogen and fifteen kilos of organic nitrogen. 
Yeah, and just maybe to talk about the soil fertility map, I suppose, look, that there, there's three options here then as well when, when you've fertility selected that you can you can select your, your lime or your pH, and um, then you can move on to your P, and then you can move on to your K levels as well. So that yeah. those three options are up there on the top left-hand corner. Yeah, just, uh, just an, uh, I think that's a, an excellent tool, Michal, that's been, <clears throat> excuse me, that's been added to, to pasture base because I think sometimes the problem with when we get soil results back is they're 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 landed on a on a on a pile of on a, on a pile of paper that's already in a corner somewhere where and for kind of forgotten about for a number of months or even you know could be forgotten about altogether after that. Whereas you know if we take the time to put them into pasture base and maybe you know as you have the, the PDF export up there at the top and maybe maybe print. Uh, print a map for the pH and where needs work say in 2022 or where needs where needs work in terms of P and K in, in, in 2022 I think you know some people learn or maybe remember things with more more visually like you know everyone learns differently so I think you know putting your soil fertility into pasture base for 2022 I think is a, is a good idea yeah so there's a question there and it's come in there just about clover and the sword so that's sort of timely enough we might move into Clover first, Joe, and then we'll come back to your slides and we'll, we'll, we'll I think we might be finished on pasture base for yep, David anyway. Perfect. So, um, David, you might as well just highlight there your paddocks that, that from la last year, I suppose you put in some clover, so there was a paddock, it was 14, was it? Was full receded, yeah. fully receded? Yeah, 14 was fully receded with clover, um, 6 and 7 and 15 were uh, over sown then with the fertilizer spreader. So. Okay. So that was when was that done? That was done last April, was it? Or uh, slightly later than that. The full receipt number fourteen was done at the end of April, and the oversun was done shortly after that. Okay. Um, and so as for this year, obviously clover is a great tool that we're trying to, we're all we're all learning about it, and we're trying to uh, get it into our swords. And I suppose ultimately it's it's not there while while it's 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 adding benefits to better live weight gains and better milk production um from animal on an animal performance basis to reduce fertilizer reduce chemical fertilizer on the farm you know it's not just there to sit sit and look pretty we have to again focus on it and plan on it so Davis was how are you planning on reducing fertilizer in those paddocks this year what's the what's the plan. Yeah, I suppose look up to I suppose April time they'll be treated the same. Um, what we're planning on doing a paddock fourteen is coming the end of May. We'll probably just as a trial to pull nitrogen out altogether. Um, we'll keep spreading P and K throughout the summer on paddock fourteen, but I'll try try it as an experiment anyway and pull nitrogen altogether out of fourteen from the end of May to August sometime. Um, paddock six and seven and fifteen, it's all dependent. Being quite honest, what the clover content is. Um, it, it was very good last year, so hopefully if it's the same, we'll probably go half the unit rate that we're spreading throughout the summer, so it'll probably be 10 units around, roughly, on, those, on 6 and 7 and pack 15. Yeah. So, so like, the, even even something like dairy washings or, or, or dirty water around the yard, that could be an option there on, on either of those paddocks, or maybe even paddock 14, and there might be some P&K going out in it, but very little nitrogen, yeah. I suppose, or, yeah way of using that so i suppose we, we we talked about it earlier so on paddock 14 if we take four four grazing rotations over the summertime at, that would normally if we're, if we're going by our unit a day rule that joe will talk about in a minute that's about 80 units of a saving uh before you maybe you, you apply some in for the back end of the year so you're looking at a paddock 14 maybe saving 80 units this year potentially if all, all going well yeah, exactly. Yeah, look, that's like I said, that's just an experiment here, just to see how it does respond with no nitrogen. You know. Yeah, um, and, and and I suppose the other ones, the over sowing, again, as you said, looking at the clover content, uh, you probably want clover content getting close to twenty percent, I suppose, on a on a dry matter basis, which is probably you know upwards of thirty to forty percent on a visual basis before you could you could sort of pull back um pull back to the, your your half rate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Look, I'll make the call on six and seven and fifteen probably sometime in April, um, and see what way the clover content is. Look, it'll be cut back below the unit a day, regardless. Anyway, to be honest, so to see yeah. how it does perform. Um, it mightn't be half rate, but if the clover content is there, it'll be probably in around ten units around. Um, so that's the way, that's that's the plan with those ones anyway. Very good. Very good. So. Um... Yeah, and I suppose look, there, you also have red clover going into some silage ground as well. So that's 
that's another sort of trial, I suppose, for yeah. Each year. So we've um, there's a silage field that we have. It's, it's tree cut silage, so it's being receded anyway in April. Um, so what we're going to do is putting in red clover to try it, see will it work, and avoid spreading in totally all to, in a bar slurry. We're in chemical in. We're trying to avoid spreading chemical in. You get the slurry. Um, I know 7.30 in that, but chemical end will be pulled out altogether, hopefully. We'll do it as a trial and see how it goes in it. Very good. So, yeah, yeah, and you are planning on doing some some more reseeding this year, another another paddock full reseed, and then a couple of paddocks over so on as well with clover and on the milking platform. Yeah, there's five acres to do um, on the milking platform, and there we'll probably do another two or three acres. So we'll probably do about 12% of the milking platform again with, with clover this year. So. so that'll bring you up to about a quarter of the farm then? Yeah. Uh, or thereabouts with, with clover. Yeah. After yeah. after this year. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Very good. Very good. Um so thanks thanks very much, David. Is there any questions there maybe before we, we tip off on, on David and come back to Joe or yeah, there's a there's a question in there from well there's, there's two questions there for, for, for David in particular. Uh question David, uh, what value do you put on joining a grass group? Are you involved in a grass group? Yeah, so I'm involved in the Kerry Grass Group. I actually joined that in 2018. So, uh, yeah, the lads will laugh. My pre-raising covers, it's there were about 2,000 at the time when I joined the group. So I know who put that message in. Um, but yeah, it's, look, it's a massive benefit because of, I suppose they helped me massively in terms of grass measurements. Being quite honest, 2018, I didn't have a clue how to measure grass. So they've, uh, they've done something good anyway. So, so yeah. That's the stuff. That's the stuff. And would you consider um, any multi-species? Yeah, look, it's something I keep a close eye on, even in curtains. And I've look, a couple of friends of mine actually have it sewn um, in the last year. So look, it's something to watch, I suppose. But personally, what I'm trying to do where I am is try and get as much as the farm side with clover first, and then look at multi-species. Look, I suppose the main factor for me is that Clover is driving the growth in multi species. So there's, I don't have enough clover on the farm. Um, I want to get used to managing clover first before I move on to multi species, to be honest. Okay. Perfect. And I just might just so I might just answer one more question there. Uh, the view on sulfur. Um, and I suppose look at the advice there is um, about 15, 15 units of sulfur for, for grazing throughout the year and probably 15, 15 to 20 per crop. Or 20 to 15 to 20 units uh, per crop um, throughout throughout the year. Okay, so look at we're just uh, going to. There's, there's lots of questions coming in for you, David. So maybe we'll come back to a few of them at the end. We, we'll keep pushing on for now. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, so look at I suppose just covering off. Um, <clears throat> excuse me on two on two pieces there that that you know we were talking about there on the on the clover john has covered an awful lot of it um but back to some some work that was done in johnstown castle on 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 the the application of um fertilizer throughout the throughout the the mid the mid season so if we're just to go and go to go to look at um at, at this at this slide for a second and you know this had been this has been in the the grass 10 newsletter for any of you that are familiar with it we did we looked at some of this so this is some of william Burchill's um data um so how much how much um nitrogen does it take to grow a cover of 1400 okay so um, we want to look at the relationship first between uh, between protein and nitrogen. So, if we t if we have a look at the grass crew protein during the summer, you're looking at somewhere between 17 and 22 percent, um, an average of about 19 and a half percent was was the figure that they had uh, used for this. So, if we're to convert the crew protein to nitrogen, we divide the the crew protein by 6.25, so we get an average about 3.1 percent nitrogen. Um, there as, uh, as an average okay so what you will see here as i just flip back to the previous slide in the wrong order here is that we have you know a considerable amount of background um um you know soil nitrogen that's released released throughout the throughout the year okay but we have this i suppose larger fertilizer end and requirement throughout the year you know if there's no in the, in the middle in the mid in the mid season if we don't have i suppose clover to clover to 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 you know to do a bit of fixation first like and i suppose it's largely kind of as we the big increase in nitrogen needed there from you know the middle or middle middle of march on so <clears throat> if we just run through that calculation there um 
with when we had the 3.1 percent, 3.1 percent nitrogen, 1400 kilos of dry matter per hectare multiplied by the 3.1 percent means that you know we need about 43 kilos of nitrogen per hectare to to grow that 1400 kilos of grass okay um <clears throat> so if we um you know we will multiply that by 0.8 if we want to bring kilos of nitrogen per hectare back to units per acre so that's given us about 34 units to grow that to grow that 1400 okay but as you've seen in the previous you know that previous image we're probably looking at about a half a unit uh, a day coming from coming from the soil coming from the organic matter plus also some dung and urine that have been um that have been you know uh, you know i suppose spread from the from the animal and some nitrogen there that's that's uh, you know i suppose there from the from the previous uh, the previous application so we're probably getting about 11 units in a 20 day rotation of, you know, from, from those sources. So if we take, you know, the 34 and take away 11 or 12 units from that, we're kind of back in the early twenties, you know, 23 units to grow, to grow, to grow that. So that's kind of given us the, the, the one unit per day, per day rule. Okay. And that can be even in, in certain, cer certain circumstances, you know, trial a bit on farm that could be brought back to maybe 0.75 or 0.8 of a unit per day um, throughout, throughout, throughout the mid season and see, see how it goes on, on, on certain paddocks. And I think, you know, David, just to come back to you, you mentioned there, how did you get on with the 19, not 15? You were on a, probably a 20 day around, around that time, were you? Yeah, just under it, yeah, I was on about an 18 day round, so it suited perfect. Um, I suppose, like I said, that's the biggest thing for me is that I was still getting the K out at the same time of putting out the nitrogen. So it was, um, it, it seemed to be a good product. Like I said, I'll know more when the results come back for the soil te testing. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's perfect. And I suppose just look, just to look at, um, you know, uh, this, this is the, I suppose the, the nitrogen fertilizer um, strategy, you know, if we're to talk, if we're, if we are talking about the, you know, get uh, over sown clover, receding clover, uh, receding with clover um, in 2022, um, you know, and if we look at some of the work that's coming out of Clonic Hilty and some of the work that's coming out of Moore Park, there's Deer to Hennessy's um, strategy for, for in, you know, the difference between the 250 and the 150, well, where are these, where are these savings being made? So if we look at January, February, uh, January, uh, March and April, they're kind of similar enough in terms of our, the front loading of, of the nitrogen going out in terms of, you know, to, 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 to drive the, to drive the, to drive grass production. Um, where the savings are made is really when the clover on the on this scenario the 150 kilos of in clover uh you know 150 kilos of in when we have when we have the percentage of clover we want the saving has been the savings are being made um throughout throughout maybe from from the, the end of may or to or, or um middle of may to you know on throughout the the summer okay um and obviously you know our, i suppose our clover peaking kind of you know during august or into early september so um you know if people don't want to go with maybe eight units of, of, of nitrogen per hour, maybe people are kind of, you know, if people who are reducing off, um, you know, what an option here can be, you know, in uh, parlor washings or light slurry, you know, with the low emission slurry spreading could be an option on some of these paddocks, um, you know, to just get that, get that couple of units of, of nitrogen on to keep it, to keep it ticking throughout the, throughout the summer. But, you know, if this is just, these are just a, this is just a guide that if, if people have clover and are looking to drop off, um, you know, drop off the nitrogen throughout the summer, that would be the, the strategy that's, 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 that's being used. Okay. So, um, Michal, we might swap back to you again. Perfect, Joseph. Yeah. Okay. And um, I suppose we might um, just have a look at putting in fertilizer um, on the app. Um, so if I just share my uh, share the app there now, two seconds. So again, for, for anyone maybe who hasn't the app already on their phone, um, if, if they went to the app store or into the, the Google Play store, um, and you can, I suppose you can search there for uh, PBI grass, PBI grass, and um, it's usually the, the top there, the first one on the list. 
Um, so you can see it there, the first one on the list, and you can just click on download. And I'll just I'll just click on open here. So I suppose I'm just logged in as um as David here on my phone. Um, so first thing that I do, I suppose, when I, when I go into it, I'll just quickly synchronize. So I'm pulling down all the information from the website and onto the app. Um, and I need connection to the internet, 3G or 4G or Wi-Fi or, or whatever the case may be in order to do that step. Um, and I suppose if I need to put in information, um, I don't need um, I don't need connection. So maybe just on the fertilizer for tonight, um, you'll see it there is a third option. So if we just tap on fertilizer, um, you'll see that there's a list of fertilizer here. Um, they're all dated 2021. So they're last year's applications um, for mid-September. Um, so I suppose that just shows the, the most recent um, application for each paddock. Um, and I suppose we also have a report here on the right hand side up at the top. Um, so this is the total amount of fertilizer um, that was applied per paddock a year to date. So at the, at the moment, all the figures are zero because look, we're just into 2022. Um, but you'll see there the yellow band across the top of the screen. That's the average in PK and S uh, for, the, for the whole farm. And then I suppose underneath that, you'll get it on a per paddock basis. Um, so you can keep an eye on that, I suppose, um, going through the year um, to see what paddocks um, uh, are reaching their threshold. Um, and then maybe just on, uh, to touch a bit on soil fertility, um, if we just tap on soil fertility button, um, you can see these, this is the soil fertility for the different um, paddocks. Um, so like that, if you are reversing into fertilizer and if you have compound or if you have straight nitrogen um, and you're thinking to yourself, which one should I be putting into the fertilizer spreader? Um, if you quickly go into the app here, you'll be able to see what kind of soil fertility is in those paddocks and hopefully then that um, you'll be able to make your choice will be made easier. Um, and I suppose, look, we're we're connected as well to the Dairy Go Lab in, in Mitchellstown or in, in Lumberstown. And we're also connected to FBA Laboratories in Capiquin um, as well. So I suppose anyone that has um, testing with those labs, they'll be able to get their soil fertility uploaded. Um, automatically um, and then maybe just to add a record um, so I'll click on add new um, you can see there select paddocks um, I suppose this time of the year maybe a blanket spread or maybe you, you might want to, to do maybe two thirds of the farm or whatever the case may be um, or you can just select the, the paddocks individually so maybe if we just select paddock one for this example uh, click on done today's date automatically comes in there the 20 to the first um, and then we have a list of I suppose fertilizers and, and slurries. Um, so maybe for this one, we, we just might keep it simple. Um, and we just go down here to P for protected urea. Um, so we have this 38% product. Um, next box, I suppose, is, is the amount type. Um, so you have four options here. Uh, you have the uh, total amount of product, um, the amount of product per acre, the amount of product per hectare, and then the fourth option here is units of units of N per acre. Um, so I don't know, David, which option would you be more familiar with maybe or which one which one do you use? I know it, there can be a lot of confusion, I suppose, between, between these different options. Yeah, I suppose look, the way I do it is, um, say if I'm spreading a uh, 500 kilo bag of 18612, select total amount, and then I just select the paddocks that were spread. So I just let pasture base, let the app divide us out among the paddocks. So you say, you know yourself, like you could, you could think you're spreading 20 units, you might be spreading 23, or you might be spreading 18. So it's just the most accurate way of doing it. I find the only time I ever use units of N is that if I'm doing one paddock at a different rate to the rest, that's about it. But total amount is the only one I use. It's yeah. the most accurate way of doing it. Yeah, so just again, just to recap, I suppose the first three are to do with, with the physical amount. So it's the total amount that went into the fertilizer spreader and the, the amount of product per acre and the amount of product per hectare. And the final one then um, would be the units. Um, so that that would be a bit strong there. Um, so we better hurry on, don't, don't it go dead. Um, so look, maybe just 23 units um, across, um, if we change that there, um, done. And we'll just click on save. So I suppose that's, I suppose the top three records then um, are for, for those three paddocks. Um, and you've got a breakdown then of the NPK um, in those paddocks. And then just maybe we might do a fertilizer or a slurry 
um, application again maybe just select paddock four click done um, then if we just go down to C for cattle slurry um, and there's I suppose there is a big um, there's a good long list of them there I suppose different ap application methods um, we'll just go for dribble bar dilute spring um, and then maybe we'll go with um, the amount per acre um, so we put in two and a half thousand and gallons and then uh, click on save so that's that's your for your slurry um your slurry application there for paddock four and if you look at the amount of nitrogen um in in that two and a half thousand gallons it's nearly the same as uh, 23 units of, of urea so i suppose um slurry i suppose look it's it, it's not to be um not to be messed around this year and, and we need to use it i suppose to its full its full potential um have you any i suppose tips david maybe on, on how you use how you record fertilizer or or when you record fertilizer or, or what how do you see other farmers maybe doing it yeah i suppose the way i'm doing it is um i'm recording it as i'm spreading it so say if i do four paddocks i do what you did there now i select total amount hit the amount of fertilizer that i spread total amount and uh, hit the fertilizer that i was spreading and do it that way it's just the most accurate way um in terms of even there, like you were looking at the slurry side of it, uh, what I actually normally do is hit the dilute slurry. I haven't tested it, but the figure for strong slurry is, is that bit higher. So I kind of tend to err on the side of caution with that one. So I just hit dilute slurry all the time. That's that's the figure I go with. So. Okay, good stuff. Um, we might leave it back to you. So, Joseph, maybe. Yeah, are you, well, we're we just going to cover across to the pasture base. Um... The, okay. the computer for two seconds and we'll just quick look at the NUE me yeah, all of that yeah, all right that's over to the NUE here now so and we're on the home straight then just and, while we're on that uh, there's a question in there David uh, do you see any difference in the oversown versus the full reseed or can you maybe even not in your own farm for maybe farms that you've walked have you seen any difference or um no, not necessarily. Like the paddocks I oversaw last year, I put out a heavier rate than recommended with the clover because of the risk of the seed not taking. So I think I actually went between a half or four kilos of clover uh, per acre just to make sure that I did get seed contact. Um, but no, the, the cover, I was happy with the amount of clover actually in the oversaw paddocks. But again, I suppose it'd be a hell of a lot easier to get it in the fuller seed because yeah. there's no work to do it. Whereas the fertilizer spreader there, like what I was doing was spreading in two different directions. So I spread up, up and down the field and across ways as well to make sure it spreads evenly. But um, look, I suppose it's an easy way, an easy and cheap way of getting clover into the fields if they're not going to be receded. That's the way I do it. So. Very good. Very good. Um, Michal, you just you want to show your thing there then? Yeah. So you can see David's profile there again. Yeah. Um, so if we if we talk about NUE, I suppose look, we're down here um fertilizer slash slurry, um, and we have the NUE percentage calculator here. So we we'll just click on that. Um one done here for 2021. So again, it's something that you do at the end of the year, I suppose, when when you know how much um how much milk you supplied to the co-op, um, how much fertilizer you applied, what your stock sales were. Um, etc. So I suppose John would have um, explained what the, the NUE um, or the nitrogen use efficiency, how it's calculated. So it, it's any, I suppose, nitrogen that would have came onto the farm. So again, we're talking about fertilizer. Um, that's a source of nitrogen coming in. Any feed which is purchased. Um, so we have uh, dairy ration, we have calf ration, we have replacement heifer ration. Um, any forage, maybe there was silage, maybe there was silage bales coming in. Um, there's nitrogen coming in in those as well and I suppose then look any any um, livestock that was purchased um, and look I suppose maybe not not as common um, but there, there's also maybe slurry inputs um, maybe pig slurry coming onto the farm as well so I suppose they're all sources of nitrogen um, that, that come onto the farm and I suppose the big one being um, the fertilizer um, and then if we scroll down further um, our nitrogen outputs so maybe look on some farms, they're, they're selling forage or, or selling bales. Um, milk sales, I suppose, from, from the dairy side in particular, um, the, the percentage of protein is important as well. Um, livestock sales and maybe slurry leaving the farm as well. 
Um, so I suppose once you um, once you fill in those details, um, you have your inputs up the top here, um, your your fertilizer, um, your your feed, livestock, um, purchases, um, your outputs. So again, from the dairy side of things, your milk and your 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 livestock sales will, will be two main ones, I suppose. Then underneath, then I suppose we have we have the kind of the farm summary, or we have the report here of um, of what the NUE is for David's farm. So I suppose if we just maybe um, have a look at the right hand side of the screen, here, we have the the nitrogen use efficiency percentage, um, and I suppose David's is coming in there at twenty eight. Um, and I suppose, look, when, when we compare David's percentage to the National Farm Survey, um, David is about 3% ahead of, the, of, of what's going on nationally. Um, and then I suppose a future industry target is roughly around 35%. Um, so look, I suppose there is a bit of work to be done um, on David's farm there uh, to, to get it maybe to up into the 30s. And Dave, we might bring you in maybe just to comment on, on maybe how you how you maybe will try to increase your nitrogen use efficiency as, as time goes on? Yeah, I suppose look, it'll be a slow process here in terms of getting clover onto the farm. So um, once the clover is established, I'm hoping the fertilizer amount will be reduced over time. Um, I suppose another big thing is the milk production side of it. So the herd here, like I said earlier, is uh, three lactations on average. So there's um, a scope for improvement there. Like I said, reduced culling rate. So if we can increase the production and reduce the nitrogen um, that's being spread on farm and reduce the meal as well slightly, it should it should lift that figure year on year, hopefully. You know. Yeah, and look, I suppose anyone looking at this, I suppose for the first time, look, I suppose look the the nitrogen, you can see the nitrogen figure here coming in at about two hundred uh, kilos of in per hectare. Look, the nitrogen is going to have the biggest effect um, on your on your I suppose NUE percentage. Um, it's accounting for for a huge percentage of it. So anything to do with fertilizer, if we can reduce our fertilizer input and maintain, I suppose, production, or, or in your case, David, as your herd matures, you're going to increase it. You're definitely going to shift this um, nitrogen use efficiency percentage in, into the thirties, and and you you'll reach that target. Um, and maybe just we might just touch on as well as this farm gate surplus. Um, Look, David's figure there is coming in very favor favorably as well at 172. Um, the, the future target is 160. And I suppose this is kind of the, the nitrogen left over, I suppose, in the soil. Um, I suppose after I suppose applying whatever whatever went on and, and whatever came was salt. Um, we're obviously in, in a surplus here. And I suppose the higher that value is, um, I suppose the higher risk of nitrogen leaching um in, in the future. So look, I suppose. Farmers are generally higher than, than, than 172. And I suppose David is very close here to the target, I suppose, of 160. So I suppose the, the two figures go hand in hand, really. We're trying for a, a low, a low sur surplus um, and a high nutrient use efficiency um, percentage. So I suppose if there isn't any other questions on that, um, Joseph or John or, or David even, um, no, there's probably just one we have, but it's I suppose it's the soil test report is maybe there's a question there from Jim White there. Can we link the fertilizer applied to soil test results? And I suppose that's probably the best way of linking them is looking at a at the soil test um report, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, so if if you go down the, the left hand side here um to soil test results, um this would be maybe the quickest way of, of doing it. Um over on the right hand side here we've soil test report blue button so if we if we select that um and it'll bring you in here then to this report so again it just defaults to 2022 um so we can change that just to 2021 um and it's it's going to pull in i suppose yeah you can customize it here as well so there's just a few a few items missing so we can bring in the fertilizer um and we can bring in the amount of grass grown and we have the, the indexes so that's we we'll just save that there now for one second. Um, and we'll go back to 2021 again. And so we're just comparing the soil, soil sample results with the amount of fertilizer um, put out with the amount of grass grown in each paddock here on, on the right hand side. So I suppose that just ties the three of them nicely there together. That's your, your soil fertility report. 
Um, and maybe I suppose as we touch on reports, um, fertilizer and slurry reports, look, there's a paddock summary report there, um, a farm summary, and I suppose an application summary as well. There are your three fertilizer reports as you, um, as you record your fertilizer. Um, so I suppose, look, we have seen a big increase in the number of farmers recording fertilizer, which is great as well. Um, so I suppose reports like that soil fertility report will, yeah. will bring a couple of things together. Um, That's probably the big call to action from everyone watching tonight is to record fertilizer through pasture based this year. Do you know, because any of the farmers that we've dealt with that have uh, recorded fertilizer, fertilizer have reduced it on the year that they recorded it. Just from, again, that focus and being paying a bit more attention to what they're putting out. So that would be the big advice, I suppose, from us is to actually get recording fertilizer download the app and um, do it do it as David was saying if you can get into the habit of doing it as it's going out that's the best way okay so Joe you want to finish up a few slides then yeah. and then we'll, we'll wrap it up as us well. right yeah no look at we're, we're, we're nearly there um, <clears throat> so as we um, just yeah just really to, to summarize um, sorry no let's do share this display settings I suppose really just to, to summarize on, 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 on this evening in terms of, I suppose, the top tips to, to, to grow grass with less chemical in, in, in 2022, like obviously from a start to soil test um, to increase the, you know, to, 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 you know, to see how you can increase your optimum soil you know, and optimize soil fertility in 2022. See where you know um, that you know the fertilizer or the slurry that you're spreading can be you know best best used. Creating a spring fertilizer plan, be it a heavy soil, a dry soil, whatever you know, it's important now before you get busy in the spring to put a plan in place for all these different for all, for all the different paddocks on your farm. Um, um to test slurry and apply it with with low emission slurry spreading in in spring and i think you know it's important that that first application if you're spreading now currently that you know it's 2000 2000 gallons per acre and, and and save some of that slurry for later on in the springtime you know as 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 john and Michal said there you know the call to action fertilizer slurry lime application on pasture base that when you get to this stage next year you can sit down and put in your your you know your 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 concentrated figures or whatever into pasture base and you can calculate an nue for your farm and maybe that coupled with a bit of clover um going in 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 um in in april in april this year you know will help to will help to um you know improve that nue figure we covered a bit earlier on on reducing the reducing the the nitrogen that's been applied during the summer and uh, look at one unit a day it can be you know can be is very feasible but that actually could be reduced slightly you know and, and you know that's a that's a trial for everyone that's for every farmer individually okay as we know already we talked on the clover there a, a second ago receding you know we're going to get better bang for a buck in terms of inner slurry from from a reseed they're going to go more for excuse me at the shoulders of the year the grazing targets as david said you know um you know in the, the the correct covers to go into um the different the different targets for the different time of the year and look at recording with pasture base is is the only way to, to you know to keep an eye on that another thing probably it's very important for this year to calibrate your fertilizer spreader um and you know if you're doing your 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 the slurry yourself you know you know keep an eye out and keep calculation on how much how much slurry is going into paddocks or have a have a word with your contractor in terms of you know putting out that two thousand gallons or that two and a half thousand gallons and try and keep it you know fairly 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 on target and then again look at when you have all this work this the stuff done review your annual tonnage and and, and apply in based on the yield potential to paddocks next year because it can be you know we've seen it in previous webinars it can be a huge difference it can be you know fields receiving 220 kilos on a farm growing 15 ton and there can be fields you know growing three ton less so we can act on we can act on that if we have the if we have the the you know this information so look at david firstly first of all i'd like to to thank you for coming on with us tonight um look it's great to have some with a we, we, you know with you know good pasture based data there the slurry recorded the fertilizer recorded you know and a, and, and a plan in place already for 2022 and i'd like to thank john and Hall as well for 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 coming on tonight we will be running another webinar uh through you know in 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 late march completely focused on i suppose the on 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 um over sown and reseeding clover you know this this spring you know um, uh, we know it's, it's an area 
area of high importance for us as an industry. So um, in late March, we will be we'll be hosting a webinar in in advance of that. So lastly, I just like to thank the sponsors of the of the of the grass the grass ten program, which is Chagas the department, the Farmers Journal, AIB, Grassland Ag Agro, FBD and look at safe farming over the over the next couple of months and thanks a million for coming on tonight thank you everybody thanks david thanks oh, joe thanks, thanks david thanks, thanks guys